Prone positioning has been used to improve oxygenation in patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome, or ARDS. Prone positioning is typically considered to be used when the PF ratio, the PaO2 divided by the FiO2, is 150 or less, which is based on the PROCEVA trial published in 2013. We developed a four-phase checklist to facilitate the process of placing the patient in the prone position, which is shown in this video. Phase one checklist consists of getting the interdisciplinary team on board to prepare the patient to be placed in the prone position. The main items to highlight from this checklist are ensuring the invasive lines are placed on the same side of the patient. This is not a contraindication in the event that the lines are on opposite sides, but lines on one side is the preferred method. In the event invasive lines are on opposite sides, the central line takes precedence over the arterial line. This will be explained later in the video. The patient should be sedated according to ventilator synchrony. If the patient is sedated to a RAS of negative 5 and continues to display dyssynchrony, a paralytic can then be administered. A head-to-toe skin assessment should be completed, documented, and foam dressings placed on bony prominences. Neck mobility should be assessed and a new endotracheal tube holder should be placed with foam dressings under the holder on the cheeks to give added protection to the skin. Phase 2 Checklist The turning crew will be gathered, which consists of 5 to 6 members. Ideally, the sixth person is hands-off, reading the checklist steps out loud and monitoring vital signs. The fifth person is the respiratory therapist located at the head of the bed and two staff members will be present on each side of the patient. The respiratory therapist will pre-oxygenate the patient with 100% oxygen. They will ensure enough slack is present with the ventilator circuit and the headboard of the bed will be removed. The staff members will raise the bed to the desired height maximally inflate the bed, place it in flat position, and side rails will be removed. The respiratory therapist will now talk about airway management. To reduce the risk of inadvertent extubation, the respiratory therapist should maintain the airway with one hand holding the endotracheal tube along with the mandible, with the other hand placed under the patient's occiput to support the neck. This way, if the patient moves, the hand is moving with the head and the endotracheal tube. From here on out, all the movements will be executed on the respiratory therapist count of three. Step one, we will ensure lines and tubes from the waist up are positioned toward the head of the bed and lines and tubes from the waist down are positioned toward the foot of the bed. Ensure there is enough slack present between all lines, tubes, and monitoring equipment. This may entail bringing the IV pole and monitor closer to the patient's head of the bed. Step two, a maxi tube or a sliding sheet will be placed underneath the patient's current sheet. Make sure it is tucked as underneath the patient as possible. Next step is to remove the patient's gown, EKG leads, and EKG electrodes. We will ensure the transducer of the patient's arterial line is taped to the patient's side of the chest where the invasive lines are located. That way we can continue to monitor the pulse in the absence of telemetry. Now we will tuck the patient's hand closest to the ventilator under the patient's buttock with the palm facing up. We will place an under pad on top of the patient's chest and pelvis. 
This will help wrap moisture when the patient is in the prone position. Standard pillows will be placed on top of the patient in the horizontal position, one on the patient's chest, one on the pelvis, and one on the knees. The one on the knees is especially important to help prevent pressure sores on the knees. The idea behind the pillows is to ensure the abdomen is being offloaded, so depending on the patient's size, you may need to use more than one pillow for the chest, pelvis, etc. You want the top surface to be as flat as possible. Now a flat sheet will be placed on top of the patient, covering everything up except for the patient's head. The bottom and top sheets will now be rolled tightly together, encasing the patient. At this time, the maxi tube will remain underneath the patient to help us with repositioning. At this time, the respiratory therapist will remove the patient's pillow and will place their hands in the position as described earlier. If the respiratory therapist requests it, on the count of three, the patient will be boosted up to the head of the bed. Now, on the RT's count of three, the patient will be moved horizontally farthest away from the ventilator. On the RT's count of three, the patient will be rotated 90 degrees to the sideline position. On the RT's count of three, the patient will be slid horizontally away from the ventilator. On the RT's count of three, the nurses opposite the ventilator will pull the rolled up sheets from beneath the patient while the other nurses carefully place the patient into the prone position. We will now move on to phase three, care of the patient while prone checklist. The bed will be placed in reverse Trendelenburg position 10 to 20 degrees. If the patient needs to be positioned more center, on the RT's count of three, the patient will be moved. The maxi tube can now be removed along with the flat sheet. The EKG leads can be placed on the patient's back and a wedge will be placed underneath the patient's shins to elevate the toes off the bed surface. At this time, we will also level and zero our invasive monitoring equipment. We will use a fluidized positioner, which will be placed underneath the patient's head, so the respiratory therapist will be assisted by helping to elevate the patient's chest. The patient's ears will be checked to ensure they are not being compressed and foam dressings may be applied to prevent pressure injury. Assess the face for bony prominences and mold the fluidizer pillows so that pressure points are being offloaded and both eyes can be visible. The Foley stat lock can now be placed on the patient's thigh. And that is how you place the patient in the prone position. And now we will go over the process of tilting the patient's head side to side and placing the patient's arms into the swimmer's position. The patient's head and arms will be repositioned every four hours. If the face is on the right side, the opposite arm will be placed upward, while the other arm is placed downward and vice versa. 
This can be done two different ways. The first way is to boost the patient up to the head of the bed so that the head is floating off the mattress. Then the RT can tilt the head to the opposite side. The second way is to pull the patient's chest upward while the RT repositions the head to the opposite side. The arms will move along in the swimmer's position as we described above. Steps for manual supination. Now we will teach you how to place the patient back to the supine position from the prone position. First, we will ensure that lines and tubes found from the waist up are positioned toward the head of the bed and lines and tubes from the waist down are positioned toward the foot of the bed. We are going to ensure we have enough slack present. We are going to maximally inflate the bed, place it in flat position, We will remove the patient's gown, EKG leads, and EKG electrodes. We will tuck the patient's hand that is on the opposite side of the ventilator under the patient's hip with the palm facing up. Then we will place a maxi tube or a sliding sheet underneath the patient's current sheet. At this time, we are ensuring that the transducer is taped to the side of the chest where the invasive lines are present. Then we will place an under pad on the patient's buttocks. We will place a sheet on top of everything, covering the patient up except for the patient's head. And we will roll the bottom and top sheets tightly together, encasing the patient. At this time, the respiratory therapist will remove the patient's pillow and position its hands on the patient's neck and occiput as described in the previous steps. If the RT requests it, on the RT's count of three, the patient will be boosted up to the head of the bed. On the RT's count of three, now the patient will be horizontally moved to the edge of the bed closest to the ventilator. On the RT's count of three, the patient will be rotated 90 degrees to the sideline position with the ET tube facing the ventilator. On the RT's count of three, while the patient is in sideline position, slide the patient horizontally towards the ventilator. On the RT's count of three, nurses on the ventilator side will pull the rolled up sheets from beneath the patient while the other nurses carefully turn the patient into the supine position. This maneuver is done based on the ProSiva trial, 16 hours, 
the patient remains in the prone position and two to four hours the patient is placed back into the supine position. At this time we will assess the patient's arterial blood gas and if the PF ratio is still 150 or less, we will go through more cycles of pronation and supination.